Good evening, sister and brother hey, Smith. How are you? How are you doing? All right. Was I'm that doing... Sister Yeah, how you doing? I'm doing good. Okay. It's uh, Wednesday. I know our group in uh, Chicago won't be joining us, but I'm, I'm sure they're having a great time up there. When did they leave um, heading that way? Uh, they left yesterday. Oh, did they? Okay. Yesterday. Mm hmm They had no problem with the flight. Uh, they did not. Uh, they had a, a hydraulic leak uh, before they left Birmingham, and I think they was able to get that fixed. And, um, okay, good. They made it safely. Good. Thank God. Good. Reverend Eastman. What was that, Pastor? Muted. I was saying, I was saying hello to Reverend Eastman. Hey, could you hear me now? I hear you now. Okay, you hear me now. All right. Yeah. You doing all right this evening? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, by the grace of God. All right. I see uh, Brother Smith, Sister Smith. <clears throat> all right, Reverend Eastman. If, uh, you say something, Brother Smith? Just speaking again, I'm sort of engaged in dinner, so okay. I'm here. <laughs> All right. Well, what are we having for dinner? Uh, <laughs> tuna you know, greens, I... chicken wings, baked potatoes. Okay, because I, you know, I don't, you know, I got to fend for myself this week. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I may have I may have to join you all the rest of the week, you know, just to, you know, get some real food. Come on, we got plenty. <laughs> all right, we'll get started. Uh, Reverend uh, Eastman, can you open us up with prayer? I sure can. We say thank you, God, in the loving name of Jesus Christ for blessing us again to reconvene, Lord, for Bible study. We pray at this time, not God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that all the ears, Lord, be open wisely. And let the word be called God and go out with understanding. We thank you also, Lord, for just blessing us to see another Christmas. We pray and continue, to Lord, for those who travel to Chicago, Lord, they have a safe, thank you for a safe flight up there. We ask for a safe flight back home for them. We give thanks to you, God, in Jesus Christ, love and name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for uh, being in this uh, Bible study. This, I don't know. <clears throat> If you all had a busy week, but um, we thank God for the week. Uh, we thank God for you and for the church and his word. Um, we're grateful to come together another Wednesday. Um, we're still in Acts 14. Um, prayerfully, we'll finish it um, this evening. I'll recap of what we, because uh, it's been a few weeks since we've been together. Um, for a Bible study. So I'll do a quick recap and then we will um, finish the lesson. Mm -hmm. On um, last time we met with 14, we know that Paul mm -hmm. and Barnabas was in Iconium. We know that um, they went into the synagogues. We, um, <clears throat> we know they preached in verse uh uh, they, they came together into the synagogues, they preached, they got into the synagogues and they had um, some problems. Um, they had some unbelieving Jews that stirred up some mess, stirred, kept up some confusion um, within the synagogue and <clears throat> they moved about. We know that they uh, continue to go and then they come across a lame man um, <clears throat> who um, they said, you know, rise up and walk, and he was healed. Um, or they said, stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped and he walked. Um, then we find that Paul and Barnabas was defiled um, around about verse um, 11 um, through 13, where, um, you know, they were, the people thought that they were gods, and uh, they gave them names. Um, Jupiter. Uh, they gave them names. Uh, they thought that they was uh, God sending the flesh, and um, they had to remind 
those uh, people that um, they were not gods. Um, there was only one God. Um, you know, the God to sit high and look low. Um, they had to remind them that um, they uh, they were fleshly men. They were born just like you and I uh, of natural birth. And um, yeah, they had spiritual gifts. So, and so do some of you. Uh, some of us have uh, spiritual gifts, but <clears throat> they were defiled because when the people saw them, you know, they saw that miracle when they told the man uh, to get up and walk. Um, and he leaped and he walked. You know, that's all it took. And in those days, you know, it, it just took a sign and people um, would believe that they would be, um, you know, miraculous, that they were uh, maybe some type of angel. Um, so Paul and Barnabas had to let them know that we did not come down in the likeness of men. Um, you know, we're not Jupiter, we're not Mercury. And then they get on down to where um, we, I think we stopped in verse 14. <clears throat> the miracle happened, uh, just to recap, and we get down um, to verse 14, where Paul's in danger again. <clears throat> Any questions so far? Did I move too fast? Mm -mm, I don't think so. I know Brother Smith likes to slow down. And, the book. Uh, we're the still book? in Acts 14. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Book of Acts. Is that Sister Cotton? Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes, How, How are you? Are you? Doing? Well, how are you? Good, pretty good. Pretty oh, good. That's great. Pretty good. good to hear your voice. Yes, so Paul's in danger. And um, when we start out with 14 and uh, Paul, anytime any of us are basically trying to live for God, trying to live for Jesus, trying to walk the straight and narrow path, we're going to find ourselves in danger. That's going to be Satan is going to tap somebody on the shoulder. Satan is going to, he's going to get in somebody's mind. Um, Satan is going to push somebody up. Remember, he can't do anything um by himself he have to use somebody to do his work uh, so um <clears throat> just like us so let's look at verse 14 um let's look at 14 verse 14 uh i saw sister moffitt I'm here. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Can you read the uh, 14 for me? And um, yeah, just for, for verse 14 for now. Okay. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting. Okay. On. So when they heard of those things, what, what did they hear? They, when um, the people was trying to make them gods, when they was trying to, mm -hmm. they wanted to let them know that they're not God. They went out, they took, tore their clothes off, they ran among the people and uh, they were crying out. I wonder what they were saying. Other, they were crying out, but what you thought the words were? What do you think they were saying? We're a human well, just like you are. Mm. We're not gods. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I don't think you need to say it today, sir. Because <laughs> <laughs> you see it, you see it in the next verse. Mm -hmm. You know, in fifteen. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, go ahead with that one, Rosemary. Okay, men, why are you doing this? We too are only men, human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from those worthless things to the living God who made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. Wow. Isn't that something? They uh, tore off their clothes. Mm -hmm. When you tear off your clothes, you get some attention, can't you? Yes. <laughs> you know, whether they got a, a physique, whether they have big chests or, or <laughs> big arms, or just, you get some, because people now think you would be strange if you tear, you, you tear off your clothes and walk through um, St. Peter, what would we wonder? Eastman, 
Eastman and Brother Smith decided to tear off all they 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 <laughs> t-shirts and, and and their tie and just and just walk through just showing their their chest. They have lost their mind. They have lost their everlasting mind. <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> right. That's what people will begin to want. But they did something to get the people's attention. They they shouted. They uh, says, "Hey, why do you think these things? We're we're not the men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that you should turn from your vanities unto." They're coming. Uh, they're preaching unto these people, getting them to see that they are just men. They're just human. Uh, God had to give them the power to be able to heal. He gave them the power to be able to do those things. But, you know, one of the things we don't want is for people to think that we're better than God or as equal to God. All right. Right? That's right. Yeah. So they thought they were God. They, they shouted, men, um, you know, you must not do this. Don't think we're gods. We're human. I think I touched on this on the last time. Um, Next, we're here to tell you the good news, huh? And what chapter is you in? We're in chapter fourteen. 14. We're at verse fifteen now. Acts, okay. Acts, chapter fourteen. Don't give attention to these foolish things. Is is what they're saying. Start to trust God, who is alive. You know, trust the one that don't make mistakes. Trust the one that will never leave you or forsake you. Trust the one that's always forgiven and all love. And trust that one that cares and that loves you and, um, you know, wants you to be the best that you can be. The God who made the sky. God didn't need our help to make the sky, did he? No. no. God that made the heaven. He didn't need our help to do none of that, right? Right. The God that... Um, spoke things into existence and the one who set the sun where it is and the stars, how they sit. What? It's an amazing. What do you have done? Hey, they're telling him to turn to him. The one who <clears throat> separated the land and the sea and made everything that's in them. <clears throat> and then he goes on to 16, um, Sister uh, Gail. Mm -hmm. 16, 16 through 18. Who in bygone generations allowed all nations to walk in their own ways? Ne 17, never, nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness, and that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with, fond and with, with food and gladness. And with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. Okay. Thank you. You got an easy read version. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Now he goes on to 16 and he says, who in the past time? First, he said, turn to the God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all the things therein. Right? Then right. he said, who in past time suffered all nations to walk in their own ways? He allowed them to walk in their own ways at one time. Right. What happens when we walk in our own way, uh, Sister Brown, sometimes when we lead our own steps? We mess up. <laughs> you need to say that. You should say we, we, we mess up. <laughs> we mess up? Yes. When we walk our own way, when we direct our own steps. But that was a time that God was so gracious and so loving and so, hey, he gave, what, what did he do when Adam, he, he made Adam and just put him out there. He allowed Adam to be free and do what he wanted to do until he disobeyed God and tried, you know, of course he tried to blame it on his wife, right? right. So he suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left, not himself without witness and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven, fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Paul and Barnabas, they're preaching about our God that, okay, I, I give you free will. He still allow us to be free more agents, although we have the Bible that give us direction. Uh, he doesn't call us and say, hey, you missed a step. 
I don't think he didn't spoke to, and, and, and all the time we mess up that you miss a step. He allowed us to be free. But he, you know, when he looked at it, it she tell, he gave us plenty of food. He reminded them in the seasons, you know, when we needed rain, God gave us rain. When we needed sunshine, he gave us sunshine. When we needed, um, you know, cold air, he gave it to us. When we, need, he rem when we needed rain, when we needed fruit, the fruitful seasons and um, filling our hearts with food. And gladness. God was a provider then. He's still a provider now. Sometimes if we had it, don't have some things, it may be because we hadn't asked God for. So Paul uh, and, and Barnabas, they're saying he makes you very happy. God uh, wants us to be happy. He wants us to live for, he wants us to uh, Satan comes to kill, to uh, steal, and destroy, but God wants us to live a fruitful life. However, when we guide our own steps, sometimes we guide them in the direction that he doesn't want us to, and we end up unhappy because in, in, some, in some instances, we end up unhappy because we knew we shouldn't have went that way. However, in verse 18, it said, and with these sayings, scarce restrained that the people, and they had not done sacrifice unto them. The people still wanted to offer a sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas. It was very difficult for Paul and Barnabas to stop them. Well, what happens if, you know, every member of St. Peter was always trying to offer something to help the church be better than what it is? to help the people that they sit next to to be better than what it is they are. To help someone that's walking by the church that needs to, help to, to be better than what they could be. So they quickly explain in verses 18, uh, 15 down to 18, they, they quickly explain Brother Benny that they were not gods, they were human, but they had a special message from God. And sometimes God will speak directly to you to have a special message to give to somebody else. Somebody may be going through some things that you're close to. Somebody may need a little counseling uh, from you. He may give you that message and that message is right for them, not nobody else, right? <clears throat> then Paul, <clears throat> Uh, he preached to his audience, um, those pagans he's talking to um, that were not Jews or Gentiles, they were not God fearers. And um, even today, you know, people take God being fears of God lightly. And, and some of the reasons they take it lightly because I didn't got away with it for so long. And, uh, you, know, you know, he ain't killed me yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, you know, speaking on terms. And, and why? And I'll open it up to the floor, to the members here. You know, why do some people don't fear God? Mm. Is it because he's not walking around here in the flesh? Somebody don't believe in them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sister Young. Hey, yeah, I, I think you triggered some truth there. Maybe if he was among us. But here's the thing. Those people, uh, those pagans, they didn't fear. Uh, they they were thinking, okay, they had a special gift here. I, now they're gods. So I'm going to try and follow them. Sometimes they have been backed up against the wall and there's nothing else they can do is turn to God. Mm hmm Yeah. That's right. So in those verses, thank you. Paul was explaining that 
God provided everything they needed. And I'm explaining to our people that God will provide everything we need if we just trust in him. Not what we want, but what we need. Some people All right. would think, well. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Some, some people would think, well, I've been doing this my way for so long. Why do I need God? And then time something happened, the first name they call, oh, my God. You're right. And that's what Trump Trump said that uh Sister Young, that he don't know where God is. He don't know where I'm making it happen. Those were his words when he was in office. If Trump can think that there's so many other people that believe that too. That's right. <clears throat> but we have to believe that there's a God that give us the strength that we need daily. They give us the activity of our limbs. They keep us in our right mind. And I'm glad that they took the time to preach that and remind them that God is still a living God. Amen. All right, let's look at verse 19 and 20. Um, I saw uh, Sister Brown. Okay. And there came... There's certain certain Jews from Antioch in what is this in Conium who persuaded yeah, Conium. Mm -hmm. yeah in Conium who persuaded the people having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead how bet as the disciples yeah. stood around about him he rose up came into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. Mm. Look how God would still take care of, of the people. You know, they get upset because he preaching the word of God. I know some of, you know, some of our members probably get upset <laughs> on some of the sermons and some of the words, or some of the things that we preach. Uh, some churches, some people get offended. They leave uh, when they hear the word of God, if it convict them. Um, but here they are, he preaching. And you got some Jewish leaders that came from Antioch in Iconium. They, here, here they are, who persuaded the people. They persuaded the people. That's what the book say. Now, they persuaded them. Now, here's the thing. Um, how many of us have some persuasive ways? Probably all of us. <laughs> <laughs> All of us, if that person on the receiving end will give in to what you're saying. Right. Right? right. Can be persuaded. So here they are, they're persuading him. They are uh, the crowds. It says that who persuaded the people. Here are the people that are standing there. And these Jews from Antioch with confusion and mess in their hearts and malice, um, they persuaded having stone Paul, uh, Paul Stone, drew him out of the, the city, brought him out of the city, lured him away, brought him out of the city. And it said, suppose he had been dead. I think they thought they killed him. But isn't this the same thing that Trump did? He drew people to Washington from their cities. And oh, yeah. He drew them from everywhere, even everywhere. from Alabama. Mm -hmm. Persuaded them. Right. Right. Come to Washington. Whatever he said, and then he denied he had anything to do with it. <laughs> right. But he was able to get all these people up. Louis Farrakhan when they had the Million Man March, was able to get a million men into, mm -hmm. into D.C. When Martin Luther King oh, right. did his sermon, his speech, his, you know, <clears throat> his march. he was able to get a lot of people, but for the good. Now, some people can persuade people for the good. Right. And some can persuade them for the bad. So they were able to persuade these people. They hear they are. They come from other areas and whatever they were saying to them was so good to them to the point to where I mean it, they hey 
Let's stone him. Drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. But he wasn't dead. Right? Right. <clears throat> um, why do you think that they were upset? Brother Benny going to probably answer that for you. <laughs> Why was uh, why was who upset? Why was the uh, the Jews those Antioch, Jews that those Jews that came from Iconium and Dirt, uh, yeah. Antioch? Antioch, yeah, yeah. Well, they had already dealt with Paul back there. Mm -hmm. and they were still upset with the things that had happened when Paul was in Antioch, and and, and I think y'all remember uh, they kind of got away, had to run away from some of those places. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul and Barnabas. Yeah. And now uh, they're getting the message that this kind of thing that had happened back in Antioch and Iconium is still going on. Mm -hmm. So and, now and, they and, are going forward. Uh, right. To and, the, and stop it. And the major thing was going forward was they were per not persuading people, they were bringing people. Uh, so many people now is becoming Christians. Right. And they didn't like that. Right. 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 So here's the thing. In order for them to come to Antioch, wherever Paul and Barnabas was moving about, these Jewish leaders was following. These right. these these Jews were they were behind them. They was going to plan to stop them. I'm, I'm, we going we going to stop them from uh, spreading the gospel. We're going to stop them from uh, people becoming Christians. And it's just sad to say when they don't know um when they didn't know uh the truth behind the gospel and what paul and barnabas were doing uh it's just sad to say that they're stopping something good from happening right they're stopping right because uh you know we have that in matthew 28 i believe it's 19 where he's telling them to go into the world the Great Commission mm -hmm. but to what preach was, and teach to everyone. Go ahead, Reverend. Yeah, what was so sad about this, they were trying to hold on to the law, you know, right. you know Moses, but see, realizing that Moses and the prophets were talking about Christ or pointing toward mm -hmm. Christ. And you see mm -hmm. what I mean? But they were trying to hold on to the law, though. Because, yep. like you said, they didn't want to, you know, adapt to Christianity, you know. Right. And, you know, but Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. He just come to expand and fill it, fulfill it, you know. Mm -hmm. he come here, but that's all I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, true. So, and, they, uh, and go ahead. I would say <clears throat> Paul, would, Paul would should at least understand where the people are coming from because he was there before them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. right. you know, Paul was, you know, in the beginning when he was Saul, he was chasing down this same group of people, mm -hmm. exactly. you know, to drag right. them back and have oh, them yeah. heal. Yeah. So, you know, he kind of understood where they were coming from. The difference in this particular part, um, you know, the Jews, came there but the other people were influenced by greek uh mythology you know mm. when they were talking about zeus and yeah all of those folk oh yeah yeah so paul couldn't really necessarily relate to that but when these jews came you know paul knew exactly where they were coming from because he had yeah. been there already yeah he'd been there and he knew that they were angry they were angry because i mean they planned to stop them um, they were very angry, but Paul was, um, he continued to preach. They wanted to stop him from preaching, stop him spreading the word. And uh, that's what the devil wants. He wants to stop the church and shut the churches down and um, not get that word out to the people. But God's word is quick and powerful, sharp and intuitive sword. His word will not return to him void. And he has to have people like Paul and people like Eastman and, and Abernath and, my, and all of you to learn the word and take it out into the world to those that need to hear it. They persuaded the crowd to throw rocks at him, to stone him. You know what, back then they threw rocks. 
I don't see no rocks getting thrown nowadays. Now they throw bullets. They sure do. Right? Right. Right. Yeah. You know. Um then they were afraid. You know, they um they threw the rocks. They were afraid of him. They thought he was dead. <clears throat> um, you know, they probably was afraid that they can get in trouble for murder, you know, but they and that's probably why they drugged the body out of the city. I mean, what other reason why would you do it other than being there? I mean, if you if if you wasn't afraid, you could have did it right then and left it there. Right. But they took the body and uh, drug it out of the city. Howbeit, as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up, came into the city. The next day, he departed from them. So uh, they drug him out of the city. Did he, you think he played dead? <laughs> no, I don't think he probably played dead. He might have been stunned. Mm -hmm. You think he just went into a little coma temporarily? Mm -hmm. For a few minutes, yeah. Someone hitting you with stones, especially if they hit your head, you know, you might kind of blank out, you know, for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But I uh, believe it. Uh -huh. I believe this is the way. I believe this is the way God had it to be, so His message right. could be fulfilled. It's, yeah. So it wasn't Paul's time, right? Right. Right. They thought he was dead, but he wasn't. Right. He but rose dead. up. He rose up. He didn't rise, like, but it said he rose up and went into the city. And the next day departed with Barnabas and Derby. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can do anything but say it. That's right. That should have been some broken bones or something going on when, the, you know, they, they picked up stones and, 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 you know, stones in your body it can tear the flesh up. It does all yeah. kind of things. Now, mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Right. To so, me, mm -hmm. to me, I think basically, I always thought like he God might have put him in a position like he put Adam here when he removed one of Adam lives. You know, he allowed Adam to fall into a deep sleep. And I just sometimes I always thought that maybe when you look at this, he might have just when they start hitting mm -hmm. Paul, God might just put him in a in a mm -hmm. state. You know right. what I'm trying to say? Yeah. In some right. kind of state like that, and then you know. Once he got, when they left, then, you know, woke him up. It's going to make sense to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, you, and and it, it makes very sense. I mean, I think back on 9-11, when the planes hit the towers. Uh, it, you know, I just truly believe that God's people didn't feel anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I I just believe it. They did. Um, I'm I, and I'm not a prophet. I, I don't know for sure, but um, has he he does things in mysterious ways, you know. Yep. He he's miraculous. So you can looking back at Paul, you can see him preach, talk about God, the people following, the people listening. And then you got some of the same people that turn against him. That's, uh, you know, quite familiar. So Paul is stoned. So um, let's look at verse 21 um, and 22. And I think, uh, Sister Boney, you have your Bible? Uh, yes. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystria and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. When they had preached the gospel to the city, they taught me that, you know, it takes some bravery to uh, get beat down, to get stoned, to get drug out, and then get up and come back and continue um, to do in front of the people. 
Paul was brave. I mean, when he uh, recovered, he didn't leave the region. He didn't leave, right? right. Say so he went straight back to Lystra, went straight back, right? And <laughs> when Christians suffer because of their faith, God give them great courage. And when we look at that, we can see that. Um, you know, we find that a lot of people will ask why Christians are so brave. Why are you so brave, Sister Ma? Well, because I know man can kill the body, but he can't kill the soul. Kill the soul. Amen. Right. And another thing I would say, uh, the reason Paul and died because this was his assignment from God. God sent him to these people. Uh, Paul was out there persecuting the church, but now God got him preaching to the unbelievers. So he wasn't about to die. Yeah. This is his assignment from God that he would take the, to the end. Well, you know, Sister Young, when we go through stuff, uh, do we get stronger or weaker sometimes? Strong. We we get stronger. We should. Oh. We should get strong, but sometimes well, during the tribulation like this, sometimes we get mm -hmm. weak along sometimes, the way. Sometimes, yeah. So we, some tribulations make you weak, but most of the time when you've gone through some things and you trust that God has brought you out, you yeah. get stronger. Mm -hmm. So the next time you go through it, you get a little stronger, and then you, you're getting stronger. Those are some of the things, Paul, uh, we can see in this. He's He's getting stronger. He, you know, some 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 folks would have they would have got the heck out of Dodge. Yeah. After they've been stoned and people thought they were dead and they drug out the city and he get, they would have got on out and said, no, let me out. I, I don't need to do that. But he trusted that God would still be with him. And um, and here's the thing. Once we we've been called and um, and. A lot of us, even if you're not a preacher, you know, God tell you to do some things. Sometimes you're going to be persecuted and talked about, and but mm -hmm. you got to keep on doing what he told you to do. That's right. I'm mm -hmm. sure, you know, um, that some of us have had friends that still wanted us to be in the world. And because they want mm -hmm. to stay in the world and not come out, they want to talk about you now. <laughs> You know, that you didn't gave your life over to them, and, and I still want you to hang out. But um, Christians, um, we should become brave. Every time we, God, take us through a trial and a tribulation, he bring us out, um, it, it should make us stronger. And when people see how God has moved in your life, um they should want to ask the question, not only what must I be saved, but hey, uh, I need to, I want to know more about your God. Paul stayed, uh-huh. That's your testimony, you know, to yep. help other people mm -hmm. to bring them in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Paul, look here, Paul stayed um, in Lister for one night. Then he went to Derby. Right, that's that's what your book said. With Barnabas, mm -hmm. um, when you look at the map, Derby is about seventy miles away. Hmm. You know, and Paul, after going through that, he had to travel those seventy miles. Had a very strong body, had to have, and a strong mind. You can see that, and he wanted to tell as many people as possible about Jesus. And here's the thing, once you, he wasn't going to let nobody stop him. Hey. And once we make our minds up to follow Jesus, once we make our minds up to be a child of God, we shouldn't let anybody stop us. So verse 21, thank you, uh, Sister, um, for reading that. As we, they preached the gospel to the city and had taught many they returned to Lystra and to Icona and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them. What they mean by exhort? Since we have exhorters. Uh, still preaching. They were still preaching. They was exhorting them. They were lifting them up to continue in their faith, encouraging them to continue uh, in their faith. 
you know, not everyone, here's, what, here's the thing, when Paul and Barnabas went back, not everyone um, opposed them. They had, uh, you know, there was a church that started there and churches had also, um, they had started churches in Iconium and in Antioch. Everyone didn't oppose them. In fact, the new Christians, they needed to learn more. When you become a new um, babe in Christ, when you convert over, you try and learn as much as you want to uh, about the Bible, especially in those first, first, first few weeks. So they need to learn more about the gospel. <clears throat> so um, also learning more about the gospel, they can identify false teachers right they can identify false preachers that's why um you know it tell us that we should study to show ourselves approved so we can know if uh the person standing up before us know what they're talking about or if they just you know blow and smoke <laughs> so the people in those churches would only believe what was true and they also needed good leaders to guide them they needed to know what was true, and they needed good leaders to gather. So when we look at verses 23, and um, Brother Smith, can you get 23 and 24 and 25? Okay, uh, 23. So when they had appointed elders mm. in every church and prayed with fasting, they commanded them to the Lord. I'm sorry, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. And after they had passed through uh, Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. Now when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Smith. So after they confirmed the souls of the disciples and after they exhorted them to continue in faith and encourage them, that they must do much tribulations enter into the kingdom of God. Now it comes to, and when they had ordained elders, you see the elders with an S, does everybody have elders in their book or do they yes. have something different? Have it has elders. elders with an S. Mm -hmm. And that's important because it could have just said elder. Yeah. But it said ordain them elders with an S, mean more than one, yeah. in every church. Now, we have more than one elder at St. Peter. I'm an elder. We're an elder. Mm -hmm. right? right? Right. But every, every one of our churches don't have elders. Right. In fact, some don't have elders at all. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. But it's important that God set this up because elders are, elders are the leaders. <laughs> Well, actually, my Bible says that it does not use the word elders. It says that they had the disciples in each church choose spiritual leaders. Mm -hmm. And with yep. prayer and fasting, they entrusted the leaders to mm -hmm. the Lord in whom they believed. So it, my uh, Bible uh, doesn't yeah. use the term elders. It says spiritual leaders. Yeah, which is the same thing as elders. Um, so what it what and what we what we're saying here? Thank you, Sister uh, Patton. That the spiritual leaders would be the considered the same thing as the elders. When they set the churches up, then they set them up with elders and uh, pastors, and the elders were and and you find a lot of churches don't want elders. The pastors don't want elders because the elders are over the pastors. The elders can hold the pastors accountable. So when you have a lot of guys, people that's going out and they start in their own church, some of them will make sure that they don't have elders because they don't want that accountability. They want to be the one to say what to do. And I don't want nobody telling me what to do or watching over me. Or so 
we say that <clears throat> when we look at <clears throat> the idea of elders, it's a reason why God set that up. What can an elder do for a church? Just open up and think about what can an elder do? How can an elder help a church, help the church? Well, for one thing, they can be, they are leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, they know the scriptures. So they mm -hmm. can help with Sunday school. They can even help when the pastor isn't there. Mm -hmm. so, um, they can help with the members. Right. They, they can help counsel and help with the members. Yeah. You, 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 you're saying it. They are just like uh, if they over the pastor, they have to know what the pastor knows. So they can fill in and preach. They can teach. And some churches that the elders, the pastor don't do any teaching. The elders do all the teaching, all the Bible study. Yeah. Pastor does the preaching, but the elders do all the teaching. So, you know, <clears throat> they can hold the pastor accountable in the context of a shared ministry. <clears throat> they can save the pastor from a multitude of errors in judgment. You know, before it comes apparent, I, I, I read a lot and I see where, you know, these churches that have elders like out in Texas where, you know, a pastor has sent some misappropriate texts messages to a member and you know it got back to them and how the elders would sit them down and actually go back and retrain the pastor even even in our denomination um the elder has our presiding elder has um you know want all the pastors to go back and read the discipline on uh, sexual harassment um and sexual misconduct because that's becoming um, apparent, you know, within the church. It's always been there, but it's really getting bad. Um, <clears throat> so those are some of the things. So he says, and when he ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, then commended them to the Lord of whom they believe. <clears throat> and after they passed throughout, <clears throat> you know, they... He, once they went out, he, <clears throat> he ordained them so they can help because the reason a church should have elders is because the New Testament says so. Right. They didn't talk about it in the Old Testament. No so like they do in the New Testament. They should have them. These are men who will direct the affairs of the church. When <clears throat> we look at 1 Timothy 15, um, it tells us that we can look in Acts, uh, other verses of Acts, I think in 20 has it where they talk about elders. First Peter talks about it. Titus talks about it. <clears throat> and it's a reason. So Paul was thinking that the elders together can give exhortation within the church. <clears throat> And that's what they're supposed to do. We're not going to go into depth and look at all these different uh, scriptures for it. Any, any other reasons besides that? So these were leaders in, in the new Bible, the new summer. That's, that's what they call them. But when we follow Jesus, you know, we got to expect that. And we have to, you know, respect the elders. Uh, we have to respect the elders. I mean, that's who um, are put in place. Yep. But God also give us, he give us the helpers so, <clears throat> so that we could um, go about doing God's business. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So they travel in, in verse um, 24, we can see um, that Luke give a very short report about their journey back is... Um, very short. And um, Paul and Bombers, they preach wherever they went. Um, they returned. Uh, they went to Atala, which was, the, you know, um, a part of that area. And finally, uh, they sailed 
to Syria and they returned to Antioch there and they made they had made this circle of journey. So we got a few minutes, so we're gonna finish um, uh, 26 through 28. Um, so Sister Patton, she's still on? And then she fall off. All right, Brother Smith. I'm you, on. Oh, you still on? Okay. Let's uh, read your uh, verses 26 through 28. Okay. From Atala, they took a boat and headed home to the city of Antioch in Syria. In Antioch, they had been entrusted to God's care for the work they had now finished. When they arrived, they called the members of the church together. They reported everything God had done through them, especially that he had given people who were not Jewish the opportunity to believe. Mm -hmm. okay. Wow. They Thank stayed you. for a long time mm -hmm. with these disciples. Disciples, yeah. Thank you, Sister Patton. So we can see, you know, they arrived, they called the church together. They brought, they, they came, they brought the church together and they rehearsed, my Bible said, all that God had done with them. It's a joy, <clears throat> you know, that we can come together and share what God has done with us. Here's the thing. God may have done something, of course, for you that he hadn't done for someone else. He may have done uh, something miraculous over here. When they got back, they were overjoyed. They couldn't wait to tell him, you know, we waiting on those to come back from the winter convention to see how happy they're going to be to tell us what they've learned. <laughs> Yeah. Did they learn anything at the meeting or did they learn what Chicago looked like? I mean, we, we, we want to know what they've learned. But these, uh, you know, they were serious in the Bible. They told the people everything that God had helped them to do. And here's the thing. If we can just share a lot of the things that God has done with us to other people, I'm telling you, um, it can brighten their day. It can give them inspiration to want to be Christian. Some people don't come to our church because we hadn't shared the news about what God has done for us. Sometimes we, you know, they, they, they would probably get up and go if we share what God has done for us. You know, they would probably want to come to Bible. So if we share what God had done, they told the people how God made it possible. Now, here's the thing. The word of God says without him, Things are not possible. Mm. But with him, all things are possible. And, and, and what they were the most proud mm -hmm. of is their discipling. Yeah. How they brought what God did yeah. through them. Mm -hmm. Bringing those non-believers, turning those non-believers mm -hmm. into believers. Yeah. And that is what's most convincing to people when yeah. people can see God's work through you. Yeah. yeah, that's right. You hit it on the head. The members of their own church wanted to hear about their trip. You said it, uh, Sister Nina. Paul, they were excited. Paul and Barnabas were excited <clears throat> when they was telling the news to them that the Gentiles were becoming Christians. Something that we, probably something that they, you know, didn't think was possible. From the beginning, if you go all the way back, all the, the, the tribulations and trials that they were going through to, you know, to get them. They, they, they were becoming Christians, but it was God who made that possible. But God used Paul and Barnabas to make it possible. It wasn't Paul and Barnabas that... Uh, did all the miraculous. They just did what God told them to do. <laughs> but it was God that made it possible. So they yeah. stayed there with them. Um, they stayed on course. Um, mm -hmm. And they needed a restart to their journey. So they went back and got a little rest. So um, on their return trip to Antioch, they were engaged in a lot of, um, when you look <clears throat> when you look further into a study Bible, it talks about they're engaged in a lot of missionaries. So um I'm excited uh, what they have done and um, how they went back and they shared 
uh, their faith. And in my book, it said God done with them and how he opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And that's what God is able to do. He's able to do the things that we can't do, um, but he can use us, you know, to get the job done if we just stay, stay faithful with it. So um, we're finished with 14 um, next week. That's the first week. Okay. So we'll start in 15. Um, if the Lord say the same. And then the second week, uh, you know, is district um, Bible study. And Brother Smith, I'll be out of town um, the first, um, from the 10th through the um, 22nd, I believe, and then going on to um, down to the convocation. So I, I'll be in touch with you if I need you to cover. Um, I should be able to do it from the hotel, but I'll see how, how the signal and stuff is. Job is sending me away to Georgia for a couple of weeks. <clears throat> Thank you all for being on. Um, Sister um, Williams um, is a, um, we need to uh, lift her up in prayer. Sister Cinderella Williams, let's keep the Patton family in prayer um, for comfort. And um, there was one other I knew about. It's in my phone. Do we have any other prayer requests? Keep Brother Brother Peterson in prayer. This is Sister Peterson. Keep me in prayer, too. Sister Peterson? Yes, sir. All right. Your brother's in the hospital. Your daughter? Yes, sir. Okay. He's in mobile, and, mobile and infirmary. All right. I keep our... our Pastor, if you would keep our uh, people in Chicago at the winter meeting, all of those who are traveling, um, they had a, a way to go. You know, it took them a mm -hmm. while to, they were on the airplane for a good little while, and yeah. but they finally made it. We're thanking God that they made it safely. And they were even concerned about all those people being gathered at one place like that with the COVID going up and the. The flu, they were concerned about that, but it seemed like everybody was all right. All right, we'll Pray lift for them my up. cousin, Sylvia Lodell. Pastor Freeman. Mm-hmm. Pray for Sister Bobby Jane Winters. Jane Winters, okay. Uh, continue to pray for Sister Cheryl Jones. All right. Um, I've heard a report about uh, Sister Charlie May, which is um, I, uh, Rodney's aunt. I haven't spoken with her, but I heard uh, she may have had a stroke today. I think it may have been on Facebook, but you know, let's keep that family in prayer. Anybody else before we go to God? Right. Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, we come this evening uh, First, to give you thanks, to give you honor, to give you glory for being uh, such an awesome God. Father, we thank you for loving us uh, more than we love ourselves, thanking you for forgiving us, uh, thanking you for your son, um, Jesus, who you have sent to be an example of how we should live. Father, we thank you for this day, day we did not know that we would see but you'd allowed us to see it, Father. And we come uh, so grateful. Father, we come right now, Lord, thanking you for St. Peter. Thanking you for the members, Lord. Thanking you for the ministries, Lord. Thanking you for the building, uh, the transportation. Thanking you for all the things that you provide for us, Father, to uh, go in and worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, all those leaders, 
over the ministries, Father, who you um, have set in place, Father, to do a great work. And we're so grateful, Father. Father, we come right now, Lord, lifting up uh, some members and family and friends unto you, Father. You told us that, that we should come to you and pray and ask, and you would move on our behalf, Father. Where two or more gathered in your name, you would be in the midst. And we thank you, Lord, for being in the midst of not only the Bible study, but in our prayer. Father, we lift up Sister Williams to you, Cinderella, right now in Jesus' name. For healing, Father, for uh, any sickness that may come her way, Father, we pray that you would block it in Jesus' name. Uh, we pray for the strength that she needs, Father, the encouragement she needs, and family, uh, Father, that are gathered around. And anyone, Father, that uh, may have been around that may have been affected in any type of way of any sickness, we speak Amen. healing among them as well. Father, we come in Jesus' name lifting up uh, and her family uh, for continued comfort. Lord, for bereavement, continue to uh, let them know, Father, that you haven't left them, um, that you're still with them, Father. So we pray that you will strengthen them and pray, Lord, as um, tears continue to flow, that you would dry them, Father, that uh, any doubt that you would change their minds, Father, and let them know that uh, you're the God and that you don't make any mistakes, but you do all things well. And Father, we pray, Lord, that they will encourage one another, Father. Um, to seek and trust in you. Father, we lift up the Sister Peterson and her daughter. Uh, we've heard the report that her daughter's in the hospital. So we pray and Father, whatever she may be going through, whatever uh, diagnosis it may be, whatever um, sickness that may be there, that you would heal it, Father, that you will even give the nurses and the doctors the wisdom and knowledge and understanding to care for her, Father. But we speak healing, Father. You said that we should uh, just speak those things as if they were. So, Father, we pray that you would not only be with the doctors, but lead his uh, mind and help him to prescribe the right medicine. And if there's any surgery, Father, we pray that it would be a success. Father, we ask that her mother not to worry, Father, but let her know everything uh, will be handled, Lord, in the way that um, you will lead them in Jesus' name, Father. Uh, and Father, watch over her other daughter and keep her strengthened and encouraged during this time. Father, we pray right now for uh, Sylvia, uh, the cousin of uh, Sister Moffat. Uh, we don't know what uh, the request is, but you know, Father. So Father, we pray that you would answer that request. And Father, we pray that you would make all things well. We believe it. We trust in you. We're leaning on you, Father. And we pray, Lord, to, for her cousin, that she would uh, not worry, Father, but to trust in you that all things will be well. Father, we lift up uh, Bobby Jean Winters, Father. We pray that uh, whatever she may be experiencing, Father, you already know. Father, so we ask, Lord, that you would do what you have to do, Father, to um, fix the problem, fix the issue, fix the uh, the request that was made, Father, we pray, Lord, that you would move on our behalf. In Jesus' name we ask. Father, and then we lift up Sister Jones, Cheryl Jones, Father, for continued healing, that you will uh, continue to improve her uh, knee or her leg, Father, whatever she has surgery on, Father, so she can get back to full strength, Father. We pray, Lord, if she's going through therapy, Lord, that you would give her the strength to go through that, Father, and and the encouragement to do it, Father, and let her uh, not give up, Father, but know that you're still with her. Father, we lift up Charlie May right now, Father, for healing in Jesus' name. Uh, we heard the report, Father, you know what's going on. So we pray, Lord, that you would put your miraculous power in position, Father. And we know that, and Lord, anoint those that will be caring for her in the hospitals, Father. Father, we lift up our family, Lord, that have traveled to Chicago um, safely, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to keep your angels around them while they're there, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, bring them back safely, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would um, any mechanical things that are going wrong, Father, that those things will be pointed out as they were before they left, Father. And, Lord, that they would be fixed, Father. And they would come back, Father. Um, and we pray, Lord, that you will allow them to have just a, a great time while they're there, Father, uh, and learn and 
I keep them protected from anything that may harm them, Father. And then, Father, we lift up uh, everyone that has COVID unto you, Father, for healing, Father. We lift up everyone, Father, of our members that may be sick that we're unaware of for healing in Jesus' name. We lift yeah. up any member that may be uh, depressed or going through some things that uh, right now, Father, that you will uh, stop by and check on them, Father. Oh, and then, yeah. Father, we pray that you would continue to watch over our seniors, Father. We pray that you would keep them, Father, and don't let anyone uh, take advantage of them, Father. Keep them uh, in perfect peace. Keep them in their right mind, Father, and give them uh, the spirit of discernment, Father. Lord, that if anyone uh, come their way. Father, we ask that you would lead and guide them. We pray for our middle age. We pray for our children. We lift them up to you right now in Jesus' name. And now, Father, we lift up every officer up to you, Father, that's caring for um, the business of the church. Every member, Lord, that may be going through some things that we're unaware of that just need you to step in and move some things around to correct some things, Father, we pray and we leave it up to you. Father, you said that you would hear our prayer. You said you would answer it. And Father, we believe it right now. We claim it right now in the name of Jesus that all these things will be done. We lay it at your feet. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 Thank you all again. You all have a great Amen. evening. Who, um, mm -hmm. S Sister um, Smith, who all you have on? Does she have?